Good evening and welcome back to The Ed Show tonight. Thanks for watching. Bill Clinton in a hospital tonight here in New York City after having two stents put in. Mr. Clinton uh, called the doctor a few days ago, set up an appointment saying that he was having chest pains. He was supposed to go in yesterday. For some reason, that didn't happen. He did go in today under his own power. And, of course, he had an invasive procedure where two stents were put into one artery. Joining me now is former special assistant to Bill Clinton, Richard Socarides. Mr. Socarides. It's nice to have you with us tonight. I think you can speak to the personality of Bill Clinton that both before and after his open heart surgery in September of 2004. He's kind of a guy you just can't uh, keep on the porch. He's just going to keep on running, isn't he? No, you, cer you certainly can't keep him down. And uh, I thought Dr. Schneiderman's uh, uh, report that you just had on was really terrific. I mean, we were very relieved that he's going to be okay. And I think what she said was right, that he's been a very compliant, terrific patient. I mean, I saw him uh, just a couple of months ago. He looks really in better shape than he's looked when he was president. I mean, you know, he's trim and he looks vigorous and he's sharp as a tack. So uh, this comes as a surprise to all of us. And, you know, when you hear the news, it's like it, it, it's very frightening. But uh, quickly we learn from the statement from uh, Doug Band, his uh, principal deputy, that uh, it looks, sounds like he's going to be okay. And uh, we're, you know, all obviously very relieved. Was it hard for him back in 2004 to turn the tables on his life and slow down and realize what had happened? I know you knew him well or know him well. And uh, it, it seems that uh, not, you not only have to go through a lifestyle change, his personality had to be drawn back for a while, but it wasn't long after that that he was out on the campaign trail for John Kerry just before the election. Yeah, I don't think, I think a lot of us didn't think he slowed down that much, although um, he obviously had a, you know, he had a very difficult, uh, two very difficult procedures, and uh, he had a long recovery, uh, but he was seemed to be back pretty fast, And uh, but I think we all knew that he was very careful for the first time about what he ate and about getting the right kind of exercise. Uh, but, you know, he's a guy who is so uh, dedicated and I feel such a sense of duty, duty to the country. Uh, you know, he did. Uh, I worked for him first when he was governor uh, during the first campaign. And even even back then, before he had been president, you knew that he was doing this to help people. And he, he you see this in Haiti and, and with Katrina. I mean, this is a man who's so driven by wanting to help people, want to move the ball forward. Um, so it's hard for him to slow down, but but at least in terms of how he looks and eating right and getting the proper exercise, he's been doing pretty well. Now, back in the days of the White House, uh, and, and maybe back when he was the governor of Arkansas, but when he was in the White House, Bill Clinton would leave the White House with one security guard and go across the street and he would woof down a couple of hot dogs, wouldn't he? Or, yeah. or, or a big pull of sausage because he's from Arkansas and, and that's just how the folks there eat and that's how he grew up and that's what he would do. Yeah, he's not doing much of that. He hasn't been doing much of that recently. I mean, I, uh, I spent a couple of days with him uh, in September at the uh, Clinton Global Initiative, you know, this big event where he has leaders from all over the world, from business and government here in New York. Uh, at the same time, the U.N. is having their big general assembly. And he is very careful about about what he eats and he takes really good care of himself but he does drive himself he definitely works a, a, a long day He plays a lot of golf do you know if he jogs a lot now does he still get his running in the way he used to uh, you know he t he told me that he jogs he told me that he exercises I obviously I actually don't seem to witness it but uh, it you know it was really it was surprising this afternoon when we first did this because he seems in so much better health than he ever was. I mean, you know, when you look at him, he's thin, he's in good shape, he exercises, he takes care of himself. I mean, they had such a scare. And uh, when you hear news like this, you worry, you know, what's happening, you want to know who, you, who to call. And obviously everybody who you could possibly call are the people who are there in the middle of it, so you don't want to disturb them. But you think also of, uh, of Mrs. Clinton and uh, the, obviously the Secretary of State uh, and uh, their daughter Chelsea. And I understand from some of the news reports that uh, the Secretary of State was with the President when they heard. And you just think that, uh, you know, what goes through her mind when you hear that. And, and, and to be in that setting where they obviously both lived and worked for so many years, to be there. I mean, these people, the pre President Clinton, but obviously Secretary Clinton too, have been so central to our experience yeah. as a nation in the political environment for so long that 
when anything like this happens, it really sort of no doubt. throws you. Mr. Socarides, great to have you with us tonight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Joining me now on the phone uh, from Pennsylvania, Governor Ed Rendell. Governor Rendell, nice to have you with us tonight. What, what did you think when you heard the news that Bill Clinton was in the hospital having a procedure? Well, pretty much the same as Richard said. Uh, you know, Bill Clinton, I think, is by far the greatest uh, ex-president we've had in my lifetime. I mean, we've had some good ones, Jimmy Carter and, and the first President Bush. But Bill Clinton does so much all around the world and in America. And he's just constitutionally unable, Ed, to say no to a good cause, uh, to say no to a good candidate. He just wants to do everything and touch as many people as he can and change as much as he can. And the, the answer is uh, he's got to slow down. I mean, you know, uh, he's got to slow down to a, a, a good human a schedule. He's had a superhuman schedule for a long while, and he's got to cut back, and there's no question about it. I mean, he's, as Richard said, he's done all the right things health-wise and diet -wise, but uh, the stress of trying to do all that he does and go everywhere and keep on the go, keep moving, he just can't say no to any good cause. Governor Ed Rendell from Pennsylvania with us here on the line tonight. Uh, former President Bill Clinton in the hospital here in New York City tonight after two stents being put uh, in his artery. Now, you, you said something interesting there, uh, uh, Governor Rendell. He's going to have to slow down. Can Bill Clinton slow down? The guy's got a heart of gold. He loves being in the action. He loves being in the mix. He loves people. I have been to fundraisers where uh, he, he was the rock star, and he couldn't get enough of it because he just wants to interact and hold court with everybody. I, I, can Bill Clinton slow down? Well, I, I think he can. When I say slow down, I'm talking about comparatively slowing down. <laughs> so on a given day when he's in the U.S., he, he's got to make five stops instead of seven. When we were in the Pennsylvania primary, Ed, um, the reason, one of the reasons we you know, had a 10-point victory over President Obama was because there were Clintons everywhere. Hillary was tireless. Uh, Chelsea was a great campaigner. Um, and Bill Clinton wanted to do, he pushed me. We would schedule him and have him in five different places from 9 in the morning till 9 at night. And he'd say, oh, I'm finishing up at 8 o'clock. I can do one more. I can do one more. So what he's got to do is scale back to a very good schedule, four or five events a day, as opposed to that six and seven. And, and he's got to do that. And he's got to do a little less foreign travel. I know he cares so deeply about what's going on in the world and, and uh, righting some of the wrongs that are out there and bringing water to people who need it and helping to, to stop the AIDS ep epidemic. And those are great things. It's made him, as I said, by far the greatest ex-president in my lifetime. But he, he, we, we can't lose him. He's too important for us as a country. He's too important for the world. And all of his friends, myself, yeah. we've got to tell him, scale it back. That doesn't mean you stop. That doesn't mean you stop going to events and stop doing things and stop pushing for change. But scale it back a little. Uh, Governor Rendell, uh, put into perspective the kind of impact that Bill Clinton has had when it comes to affecting people's lives for the better. I mean, this man in the Clinton Foundation, he has raised billions of dollars. It, Globally, it's, it's just astounding what he's been able to do. It's extraordinary the impact he's had globally, and it's also extraordinary what the world thinks of him. I mean, he is beloved virtually everywhere he goes, Ireland, Africa, uh, Europe, Asia. Uh, people look to him as, as really the... the Why the, is I that? Think, is it his personality? What do you think it is? Well, it's a combination of things. One, it's his personality. He, I don't care what your politics are. You get in a room with Bill Clinton, it's pretty hard not to like him. That's number one. Number two is now that he's out of the partisan in political arena, and he gets in it once in a while because he helps good Democratic candidates, but most of his work is out of the arena. The things you're, he's doing, the things that drive him, are so patently good things that virtually everyone agrees on that, you know, he, he's become a truly beloved international figure, and um, it, it's amazing. Uh, I asked our Democratic State Committee, we, we had our recent uh, fundraiser, the one we have one a year, I asked him, if I can get anybody for you, who do you want? 
And Bill Clinton came in even out of Barack Obama, yeah. who was very much admired by the Democrats in Pennsylvania. Governor um, Rendell, great to have you with us tonight. Well, great I, to be with I, you, I appreciate Ed. your insight. Thanks we so wish much. Wish him the best of luck. Of course, all Americans do. Absolutely. Thanks so much, See Pennsylvania ya. Governor Ed Rendell, with us on the Ed Show, and of course, Secretary of uh, State Hillary Clinton was at the White House this afternoon when she got word she is on her way to New York City to be with her husband. Coming up, a man uh, who knows Bill Clinton better than anyone, Terry. McAuliffe joins me next here on The Ed Show. Stay with us.